Hey everyone, this is Thomas from German Art Recycling. Today I have with me a BMW scanner, iCarSoft uh, tool for the BMWs and Minis. This is only for BMWs and Minis. And um, this is a simple, simple tool to use. People keep asking me about them uh, ever since I introduced them onto my website and onto eBay. And I'm going to show you today how to use it. This is what you got to do. Get your key, stick it in the ignition. By the way, I'm working on an E60 right now. Uh, have the unit plugged in to the OBD2 port just like I have already. Press the start button. Do not press the brake unless you want the car to be running to read live data and all that sort of stuff. So hit diagnose. Once in diagnose, it's going to show you a bunch of different models. You do have to know what model you have. Typically, BMW guys don't have an issue, but if uh, if you're going to hand this to someone that doesn't necessarily know too much about BMWs, they got to know what kind of body cell they have. This one's an E61. So, E60, 61, same thing. So now, this is the same type of interface for like, at least the menu, uh, the menu system as the ICOM does. When you're going into function selections, it shows you a driver, chassis, and body. Well, if you're going to driver, that shows you the CAS system, engine computers, EGS, all that sort of stuff and right there that tells you how many pages you have of units so on this one I got two pages actually only one and one other one on the other one so the problem with this tool it's not a super downside but it, it does give you all the units it doesn't scan the car first to check the VIN um, to see what units or what items you do have and don't have. So for instance, it's gonna tell you, you can scan for a diesel electronics, a DDE. You're not gonna have it if it's a gas vehicle. It's only gonna have a DME. And also this is an automatic um, ZF Trans. And on here, a sequential manual gearbox come up for SMG when it doesn't have it. So things like that are gonna be popping up these kind of things are a little easier on this menu, but when you get to the body side, there's like 20 pages. A lot of them you're not going to have. Let me scan this. Hit enter. So you just hit the enter button. It's going to show me the part number, date of manufacture. Hit enter again. You can read a trouble code, erase, read data stream. I'm going to read for trouble codes. No trouble codes found. I'm going to hit back. Down. Down. Let's read some data stream. I can read operating values. I can graph out certain values like, like that one was the uh, oil level. And then let me go to another page here. That tells me the oil temperature. And then I got mass airflow meter meetings or readings. I don't obviously have anything, nothing's on, so it's not going to show anything. But let me go back and show you some other stuff. I can go to chassis. And then here it shows me all the. Uh, the body systems. If you hit this next button, it'll skip over things quickly. So in here, you can scan for um, ABS. And here's another example. It shows you three different DSCs. It shows you DSC standard, which is this one, and then DSC control plus and DSC control premium. You're not going to have all three. You're only going to have one. So in order to scan your ABS system, you got to try to either know which one you have or just scan all three until one responds. Typically, you're going to have just standard DSC. Here's the page that has a bunch of stuff. Crash safety module. CCC. This does not have navigation, even though it's showing CCC. 
which is obviously again a little downside but not a big deal um, heads up display doesn't have heads up display but you can scan anything in here uh, I'm just hitting the next button you can go down individually like this and it'll keep going up pages but I'm just hitting next because I want to scan through stuff see all these right here SFZ SGM, SGM, these are all part of the airbag systems. On these newer cars, there's not just one module you have to clear. You have to actually clear and go into each one independently, like the door, the seat, the uh, satellite. So you do have to go into each one to clear lights. Um, I'm going to show you in, an, in a little bit uh, an E65 that has an airbag light on, and I'll show you where you need to go in order to scan it. All right, so here I am with an E65. This is a 2004. Uh, 745LI 66 actually. Let me hook up the scanner. Flip open the door. Pull out the insert. Plug this guy in. My device is going to turn on. I might put in the key. Again, without pressing on the brake, I'm going to hit the start button. Unless I want to start the, uh, unless I want to scan something on the engine computer, live data on the engine, I don't hit uh, or start the car. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna hit diagnose. This is an E66. Let's go to seven series. E66. I have an airbag light on on this car. So to give you an example of how many pages, I have 19 pages. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this car has not just one airbag module. Let me show you what one airbag module looks like. E38, body. Airbag. It doesn't have just one module. E38, E39s, E46s, E85s, E83s. Uh, which are the Z4s, X3s, X5s, E53s, all those cars have one module for the airbag. And you simply clear the airbag module, and that's it. These newer cars, you don't. You have to go into each module independently. And this one starts on page number 9, or page number 9, yeah, 9, I was right. So we got A pillar left, A pillar right. That is right here and over there the A pillars are the ones in front of you B pillars are the ones beside you and the C pillars are the ones in the back there's no C pillar here back so B pillar left B pillar right that's four already there's another one another one another one another one another one another one and that was it oh and here's another one so, I have an issue on this car with the right side, the pillar right. This is what it looks like when you scan it. It gives me the part number, which is amazing, because I don't have to tear out the module in order to get the number on it if I suspect it to be bad. That alone pays for this thing, because if you're suspecting a bad module, you don't have to tear it out. Just to read the number off of it, this will tell you what the number is, as long as it's responding. This is telling me the resistance on the firing circuit for the safety battery terminal is too high. What that means is that the resistance of that battery safety terminal, which is the essentially quote-unquote airbag, it, the resistance is too high. I already looked it up on the ICOM, and it has a 4.3 ohm resistance. It's supposed to be between, be between 1.5 to 3.3 .3 ohms. So it's triggering the airbag light. I can clear it if I want to. It's gonna say it cleared it. My light on the dashboard turned yellow. Just turned yellow. But as soon as I cycle the key, it's gonna turn. It's gonna turn red again. My seat module has an issue too on my driver's uh, side. There's the module. It's telling me seat belt buckle switch and seat occupancy detector. The odds of both of those units going bad, the seat occupancy detector and the switch going bad at the same time is very, very odd. 
So I suspect that this module is broken and uh, it's going to be replaced soon, but couldn't light doesn't change anything. I can read data stream. I can read and see when someone is sitting in the, in the seat. It says it's not occupied and that the buckle's not buckled in. When I buckle in the seatbelt buckle, it says the same thing. When I sit in the seat, it says the same thing. So pretty much telling you it's not working. And you can do this in a lot of stuff. You can read live data on a lot of things. Um, see, I just went back to the main page. It took me to page one. So you have to remember what page you're on, especially if you're looking through all these pages. You're going to want to remember that the seat module is on 14. Um, because you're just going to hit next and next all the time. <laughs> so another thing you can scan is like, let's see here, where's the ask module? It'll give you kind of cool stuff. It'll give you, my amp is not in the car right now, so it's going to say you no know, communication. But like on the ask module, you can read the part number off of it if you're having bad channel issues and you want to replace it. But you can even read data stream on this. It'll tell you the temperature of it. So you know if it's overheating or not. Um, simple things like that to see if your fan's working. Um, engine data. Again, it's going to show you modules that you don't have in the car, like a DDE, you don't have it. Um, you don't have a DME2. It's not like it's a 760 or something. But read data stream on the engine computer. You can read the RPM of the motor, all these other values. There is a slight delay on these things. Um, let me show you, I'll try to show you. Look, my battery voltage is 11.6, that's not good. My battery's going out, so that'll tell you right there. in closer here this will give you mixture controls you got to know what you're looking for you know what does 0.99 voltage mean on a lambda value for bank one you got to know that it needs to be within a certain voltage um, in order to understand if it's reading right or not. Um, this gives you a smooth running measurement value, um, what the timing is on or off on. If it's really having a bad misfire, it's gonna be above one millisecond. And it's gonna be under, uh, yeah, it's gonna be above one millisecond, right? I don't know why it's reading these values. It reads them okay once the car's running, but it's reading them even when it's off. Um, so that's one weird thing about it, but it's not a big deal. And you can erase the engine computer information on here. But pretty much it's a, a nice little tool for the money. It gives you all these features that you can do that pretty much you would need a ICOM system for or an ops unit for and you can do it all through this little handheld device which you can just stick in your glove box so this is the tool you must have with you especially if you own an E65 because these cars are always always breaking down and um, you gotta have something to scan stuff when you're on the road because you don't want to be left stranded with these things a car can simply go into fail safe mode or trans fail safe and all it needs is an error reset and you don't have the capabilities of doing it um, well, then you're stuck. The pros of the i 9 10 scanner is that it's easy to use, it's quick to diagnose issues, it's a small form factor, reads live data for when you need it, it works on a large variety of cars, it has available software updates, and shows graphs, doesn't need any batteries, and does work on the older cars with the OBD2 adapter. On the other hand, the cons for this scanner is that it doesn't have coding capabilities, the refresh rate is about a one second delay. It does not automatically identify the vehicle. You must select it manually, so you gotta know what car you're working on. Doesn't do component activation. 
and when you click back after scanning a module, it returns you back to the first page of modules. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you have any other questions about this.